Welcome to WP Theme Tutorial, episode 38. Today we're going to talk about uh, your local development environment. Specifically, we're going to talk about Vagrant. So what I've used for a long time was actually MAMP. In fact, MAMP Pro. Uh, the only real difference between MAMP and MAMP Pro is that MAMP Pro allows you to map domains. So I could run a client site on local. Uh, twopaths.com would be one of my local domains for a client I'm working for right now. And MAMP Pro actually just makes it really easy with some uh, a GUI and uh, interface just to type in your local domains. That's what I've typically done. But with MAMP, what you run into is what if you need a special configuration? Um, say you're running into a specific bug with a specific version of PHP or with a specific server setup. Well, MAMP is kind of running in your global environment all the time. So if you want to ma uh, match a server exactly, you're going to run into some issues. That's where Vagrant enters. So this is the Vagrant site. It's at vagrantup.com. And all of these links are in the show notes. And what Vagrant does is it uses VMware, which you can see here, or VirtualBox. And it allows you to run a server locally with either of those two options. Now, VirtualBox and VMware are used for virtualization. Typically on my Mac, I use them for running Windows to test um, the IE browsers in Windows and I'll also uh, Chrome or Firefox in Windows environments. So what Vagrant does is it interfaces with them to allow you to set up a virtual server environment. And that way you can configure it to anything if you want to run it with Nginx and a specific version of PHP that's not a problem if you want in, or if you need to run uh, Ubuntu um, as your server and PHP then that's fine or if you need to run kind of anything else you need to run Debian Linux, that's totally fine as well. So the first thing we need to do is you're going to need to download VirtualBox, is what I'm going to use because it's free, and Vagrant. So you go to the site, download, and then for OSX hosts, it's going to download that. And for Vagrant, you can click download, and you want the latest 1.2.2. And I download the OSX version. I actually already have this those installed, so I can cancel that download, and I can close both of those. The other thing we're going to need is we're going to use the varying vagrant vagrants project by Tenup and Jeremy Felt. This is specific to WordPress, and it's excellent. What this does is it, it sets up your vagrant environment for you very very easily. So by cloning this project um, into a specific folder, you can have your basic setup and the default is an Nginx, but it has setups for uh, WordPress uh, VIP hosting. It has them for ZippyKit. I believe it has them for WP Engine as well. And you can yeah, just jump straight in and, and use this. And so that's what we're going to do today. So like I said, you download VirtualBox, download Vagrant, and just follow through on the installers for them. And then we'll move on to getting Vagrant set up. For me, I want all of my Vagrant sites, or all of my sites in general, in a site folder in my install. So I'm going to just clear that. And you can see it's in Users, Curtis McHale, Dropbox, and Sites. So I actually put that in my Dropbox so that it's automatically synced all the time. Um, with Dropbox, so I always have a backup. The next thing we're going to do, since I already have Vagrant installed, and we can be type Vagrant help. And you can see I have Vagrant installed. If you don't have Vagrant installed, it's going to terminal is going to return and that it doesn't have that command. The next thing I'm going to do is clone the GitHub repository that I just showed you from Jeremy Felton 10 up. And I'm going to say git clone the GitHub repository and I'm going to call it WP theme T Vagrant test. You see it takes a few seconds to download. I'm going to cd into wp theme t vagrant test. You can see I'm in the, that folder now. So, the other thing we have to do is we need to make sure that we have a correct hosts entry uh, for our file to make sure that when you type in, um, in this case, local.wordpress.dev, it actually points to our local environment. 
So what we need to do for that is sudo private etc host. Now the sudo command is often called super user do, and it's going to prompt me for my password. Oh, sudo, that's because I didn't type vim. sudo. I'm actually going to use mvim because that's uh, Mac vim, but you can also use vim or probably or sublime, sub l, depending on how your, your environment set up. popped up on my other screen. You can actually see that I have it already in setup. So the default um, vagrant IP address for varying vagrant vagrants is 192.168.50.4 and I've already got local.wordpress.dev set up. The other one you'd set up to work with the varying vagrants vagrant or vagrant vagrants is local wordpress trunk.dev. So I can change that. So I just saved and closed that with the colon X. When you install Vagrant right away, sorry, I should backtrack there. When you install Vagrant right away, if you had terminal open already, then you'd actually need to close your terminal and open it back up to have Vagrant work, or else it won't uh, notice that it actually has the Vagrant command. So now that we have our hosts file set up properly, what we're going to do is type vagrant up and that's just going to start our server for us. Now, the first time we do this, it's going to download about 300 megabytes of information. It's going to take a while. So I'm going to type vagrant up and let it run for a little bit and I'll actually chop the screencast a little short so you don't have to watch it all. Once it's been up once, it doesn't have to download all that a second time. It can be cached locally. All right, so we have vagrant all loaded now. And you can see the server downloaded a ton of stuff, downloaded the WordPress unit test, and download a bunch of other things. And if we go to our folder, let's see, this is my sites folder, and we download it into WPTNT Vagrant Test. And we have a couple folders in here. Now, the default, MU plugins, WordPress default, WordPress trunk, and WordPress unit test. Now, the www folder here is actually mapped to the same the www folder inside our vagrant install. So if I type vagrant ssh, which is just going to ssh me into the virtual server I have, and cd slash, oh. so I'm going to go, sorry, cd vagrant. And in here, you can see this is a www config database provision readme and vagrant file. You can see that maps exactly to right here. So let's start editing our files. You can see I'm in the www folder. And if I, so that's my path, vagrant www. So I can go cd and I want to go into WordPress default, wp content themes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy of 20, now let's go 2012, and I'm going to call it WP Theme T Vagrant Theme. And if you noticed up in the finder there, I now have WP Theme T Vagrant Team. Remember, in this, I'm SSH'd into the server. And then, so you can actually see that they're synced back and forth. So really when you're going to edit files, you're actually probably going to edit it from this side. And I'll show you that. So on my second terminal tab, I'm going to use sublime text. I'm going to sub L WP theme, like that, vagrant theme. And it popped open on my other screen. And I know that there's a style. CSS file in there. I'm in 2012, or I'm in a copy of 2012, and I'm going to call this WP test. And I can just save that. So that's saved. And I'm going to switch over here, and this is actually already refreshed because we've had some recording errors. So you can see I have my WP theme T vagrant test. Let's hop back just to show you exactly. Let's call it test two. Refresh, now it says test two, and I can activate my theme. 
and now I'd have my theme running on the you can see on the front of the site. And that's how you edit Vagrant files. So if you wanted to add plugins, you'd simply work with the plugins directory, right? And go to was it plugins, work with the plugins directory. That's it. It's not really that different than working with MAMP locally. The big difference is that you are uh, able to customize your environments in a virtual machine. So there's a few other commands you want to know. Vagrant halt actually powers down your Vagrant. So if I go back here where I SSH'd in, I can type logout. And if I type Vagrant halt, that's just going to power down my whole machine. Now it keeps all that other stuff it downloaded cached though. Um, you can also do Vagrant Suspend, which is basically like putting your computer to sleep, and then Vagrant Resume, which wakes it back up. So that's actually fairly quick. And while it's powered up, so you type Vagrant Up, if you type Vagrant Destroy, that's actually going to destroy your virtual machine. And that means that it frees up any type of RAM it was grabbing. It basically just shuts the whole thing down. You're never going to see it again. But it keeps your project files perfectly safe. So you can type Vagrant Destroy all the time, and it doesn't even need anything and then uh, when you type Vagrant up again it'll just reboot your machine and bring it back basically to how it was. This is also great if you're working in teams you can distribute the Vagrant configurations back and forth so you can all be working exactly off how your live server is set up and if there's a change you can just distribute new Vagrant ones and it lets you really um, separate um, your code that you're writing all your theme and plugin files from your environment so that you can operate them totally separately. In short, Vagrant is awesome. I've just really started digging into it in the last two weeks, and it's excellent. I'm super excited. Thanks for watching.